From Montana's news leader, this is the MTN New News. Good afternoon and thanks for joining us on the new news. I'm Diane Parker. Miller has our weekend forecast, but first our top story. A man accused of killing his wife and a bartender at a bar in Superior over the weekend pleaded not guilty to their murders. 47-year-old Craig Walter Benson is charged with two counts of deliberate homicide in the deaths of his wife Jenny Benson and bartender Logan Gardner. This happened inside the Four Acres Bar Sunday night. Benson entered his plea in Mineral County Court Thursday. According to court documents, surveillance footage shows Benson leaving the bar to retrieve an item from his vehicle before returning to sit down next to a woman. The footage then shows Benson pulling a gun from his waistband and shooting the woman in the head before turning to fire at the bartender. Benson fled the scene and was later arrested west of Lolo Monday. His next court appearance is set for November 27th. He remains in custody in the Mineral County Jail. The Gallatin County Coroner's Office has released the cause and manner of death of a Belgrade woman who died in April after eating at Dave's Sushi in Bozeman. 64-year-old Donna Ventura's death was linked to a foodborne illness outbreak that left one other person dead and around 50 people sick. Sheriff Dan Springer stated Ventura's cause of death was determined to be complications of severe gastritis due to a probable foodborne toxin. Her manner of death is accidental. Ventura Ventura died in ICU at Bozeman Deaconess Regional Medical Center in April. Ventura's family, along with the family of the Broadwater County man who also died, have filed wrongful death lawsuits against Dave Sushi. Fire crews near Pryor hope to dial back firefighting efforts today on a blaze that sparked this week and threatened dozens of homes. As of last night, the flames were 61% contained, though the fire did grow by about 600 acres during the day. At last total, the blaze was at about 3,400 acres, down from 10,000 at its peak Tuesday when high winds whipped up the fire. Recent rain has helped fire crews contain blazes burning near the Hungry Horse Reservoir, so much so that the Flathead County Sheriff's Office rescinded evacuation orders issued a month ago for all properties affected by the Tin Soldier Complex fires. The fires are burning 17 miles east of Swan Lake. The complex is considered 94% contained, having burned 8,100 acres. The Ridge Fire, which is about six miles southeast of Hungry Horse, burned 3,600 acres and is 76% contained, while the Doris Point Fire, eight miles south of Hungry Horse, is 95% contained at 1,600 acres. Fire management officials at the command posts in Hungry Horse recorded 1.7 inches of rain over the past two days. All the edges for any hot spots that may remain with these thick canopies, there are some areas that will probably still be smoldering. We also need to clean up all of our equipment out there. There's a fair bit of structures that were wrapped. We'll have to um, go through and you know, address all of those things. Following all of the rain in northwest Montana, Hungry Horse Reservoir is now open for boating. The reservoir was closed so aircraft could fight several fires burning in the area. Happy Friday, everybody. TGIF boom as we head into the weekend. First day of September, too. Our local forecast coming up in just a bit. But first, what's going on across the U.S.? I'd like to give you those headlines for the 48s. The Southwest Great Basin, marginal risk of severe thunderstorms today. Central Plains, elevated risk of fire weather. And the eastern Gulf Coast, we do have a slight risk of excessive rainfall. Hey, here's a little bit of knowledge for you. You know, today is the first day of meteorological fall. It's based on the annual temperature cycle. September 23rd is the first day of astronomical fall, what we know as fall here, what we really base it on. And that's based on the position of the Earth in relation to the sun. It is a very hot start for some, very dry start to uh, September this year. But we got some changes afoot. We'll take a look at that coming up. A Billings woman has become the state's first and only certified Gongie. MTN's David J reports on what this means for Montana's marijuana industry. Purple Cal helped pay for the education of the first certified Gongie in Montana. That's a person that has expertise and knowledge in marijuana and cannabis products and can help businesses and customers. I would recommend anyone who's new start with only one milligram. Carrie Boyder is the first and only Gongie in Montana. 
and is an elite company nationwide and around the world. I'm one of 235 certified Gongiers in the entire world right now. Now the Purple Cow Dispensary has even more to offer on the best combinations for all different consumer demands. Yeah, I need something for sleep. They know exactly what to you know, tell you. Dan Schaefer says the bud tenders know a lot about marijuana, and he welcomes any information from a ganja. I guess it's just like any kind of crop, uh, you know, producing wine, same thing. You got to know your grapes. That's also the sentiment of those in the industry. And Boyder's analysis of cannabis is similar to that of wine connoisseurs. Wine is really a great comparison um, because it's using the exact same categories that a sommelier would use. And those categories are appearance, taste, um, aroma, and then experience that you have. Boyder went through about 200 hours of education, including instruction in California, to become a certified ganja. That gave her knowledge in the different strains of marijuana and how those will fit into edibles, drinks, and other products. She says she cannot give medical advice, but she can give information. I could not um, recommend a product without having tried it myself. Purple Cow's management helped with the tuition and now have access to Boyder's expertise in many areas, including growing and processing. Gangier would be able to tell you what kind of environment it, it was grown in, how, how it's going to finish off, what kind of flavors you're going to taste and, and sense within the whole product, but then also be able to direct and educate people. Um, Boyder is not a Purple Cow employee and can also work with other marijuana shops. Now we're going to reap the rewards, but so will anybody else in the industry. This is really a great opportunity to put Montana on the map and help make sure that this emerging industry has some standards of excellence that we can all really be proud of. In Billings, David J, MTN News. Montana will receive $1.8 million to fight fentanyl and other opioid overdose risks in rural communities. The money comes from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. $1 million will go toward establishing treatment sites for individuals struggling with addiction to access medicine used to treat opioid use disorder. A half a million dollars will be spent to address neonatal exposure, including care of infants and supporting families. And $300,000 will go towards helping rural Rural communities respond to overdoses, including distributing overdose reversal medications like Narcan. New leadership at one of our national parks, Dan Stoller, will spearhead Yellowstone National Park's Wolf Project. A 21-year veteran of the National Park Service, Stoller succeeds Doug Smith, who retired at the end of December 2022. Stoller joined the Yellowstone Wolf Project in 1997 as a volunteer technician and graduate student researcher. In 2002, he was hired by the NPS as a lead biologist for the Wolf Project, in addition to his work with cougars and elk.